I hope you had a great 4th of July, friend. The President of the United States gave a speech at Mount Rushmore. Former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, said it might have been the most important speech he's ever given. He compared it to Reagan in 1982. Most of us didn't see it. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. In three, two, Welcome to the program, friend. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? That's the question that I ask myself over and over. We are watching our country slide into hell. Many of us who are a little bit older, like myself, cannot believe we're seeing it happen this quickly, this severely. What distresses me perhaps the most is the lack of pushback. So many Republicans have turned their tail and run. We've got criminals in California walking into stores, picking up items at Walmart and walking out because they know that they won't be arrested or prosecuted for anything that they steal that is under $999. This is insanity, this is evil. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Did you see how many children were killed over the, over the July 4th weekend? Gunfire in New York, in Atlanta, in Chicago. This is abominable. And it is being driven by people who hate God. It's almost as if there are demons that are being unleashed upon us through evil workers, evil doers. President Trump's speech, as I mentioned, former Speaker Newt Gingrich said it was one of the most important he ever gave. And I thought, I know that most people didn't see this speech. I'm running it on the show. So I, we, we have eliminated all of our commercials. The network will still have a break for their commercials, but we are not having commercials during this show because President Trump hit the nail on the head over and over and over again. And that's why the New York Times, the Washington Post went apoplectic. They hated this speech because they're the villains in the narrative. I give you the President of the United States. Donald J. Trump. As we begin this 4th of July weekend, the First Lady and I would wish each and every one of you a very, very happy Independence Day. Thank you. Let us show our appreciation to the South Dakota Army and Air National Guard and the U.S. Air Force for inspiring us with that magnificent display of American air power. And of course, our gratitude, as always, to the legendary and very talented Blue Angels. Thank you very much. Let us also send our deepest thanks to our wonderful veterans, law enforcement, first responders, and the doctors, nurses, and scientists working tirelessly to kill the virus. They are working hard. I want to thank them very, very much. We're grateful as well to your state's congressional delegation, Senator John Thune. John, thank you very much. Senator Mike Rounds. Thank you, Mike. And Dusty Johnson, Congressman. Hi, Dusty. Thank you. And all others with us tonight from Congress, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. There could be no better place to celebrate America's independence than beneath this magnificent, incredible, majestic mountain and monument to the greatest Americans who have ever lived. Today, we pay tribute to the exceptional lives and extraordinary legacies of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. I am here as your president to proclaim before the country and before the world, this monument will never be desecrated. These heroes will never be defaced. Their legacy will never, ever be destroyed.
Their achievements will never be forgotten, and Mount Rushmore will stand forever as an eternal tribute to our forefathers and to our freedom. We gather tonight to herald the most important day in the history of nations, July 4th, 1776. At those words, every American heart should swell with pride. Every American family should cheer with delight. And every American patriot should be filled with joy, because each of you lives in the most magnificent country in the history of the world, and it will soon be greater than ever before. Our founders launched not only a revolution in government, but a revolution in the pursuit of justice, equality, liberty, and prosperity. No nation has done more to advance the human condition than the United States of America. And no people have done more to promote human progress than the citizens of our great nation. It was all made possible by the courage of 56 patriots who gathered in Philadelphia 244 years ago and signed the Declaration of Independence. They enshrined a divine truth that changed the world forever when they said, all men are created equal. These immortal words set in motion the unstoppable march of freedom. Our founders boldly declared that we are all endowed with the same divine rights given us by our Creator in heaven, and that which God has given us we will allow no one ever to take away, ever. Seventeen seventy six represented the culmination of thousands of years of Western civilization and the triumph of not only spirit, but of wisdom philosophy, and reason. And yet, as we meet here tonight, there is a growing danger that threatens every blessing our ancestors fought so hard for, struggled, they bled to secure. Our nation is witnessing a merciless campaign to wipe out our history, to fame our heroes, erase our values, and indoctrinate our children. Angry mobs are trying to tear down statues of our founders, to face our most sacred memorials, and unleash a wave of violent crime in our cities. Many of these people have no idea why they are doing this, but some know exactly what they are doing. They think the American people are weak and soft and submissive. But no, the American people are strong and proud, and they will not allow our country and all of its values, history, and culture to be taken from them. One of their political weapons is cancel culture, driving people from their jobs. Shame.
one who disagrees. This is the very definition of totalitarianism. And it is completely alien to our culture and to our values. And it has absolutely no place in the United States of America. This attack on our liberty, our magnificent liberty, must be stopped, and it will be stopped very quickly. We will expose this dangerous movement, protect our nation's children, end this radical assault, and preserve our beloved American way of life. In our schools, our newsrooms, even our corporate boardrooms, there is a new far-left fascism that demands absolute allegiance. If you do not speak its language, perform its rituals, recite its mantras, and follow its commandments, then you will be censored, banished, blacklisted, persecuted, and punished. It's not going to happen to us. Make no mistake, this left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. In so doing, they would destroy the very civilization that rescued billions from poverty, disease, violence, and hunger, and that lifted humanity to new heights of achievement, discovery, and progress. To make this possible, they are determined to tear down every statue, symbol, and memory of our national heritage. <laughs> true. That's very true, actually. That is why I am deploying federal law enforcement to protect our monuments, arrest the rioters, and prosecute offenders to the fullest extent of the law. Thank you. I am pleased to report that yesterday, Federal agents arrested the suspected ringleader of the attack on the statue of the great Andrew Jackson in Washington, D.C. And in addition, hundreds more have been arrested. Under the executive order I signed last week pertaining to the Veterans Memorial Preservation and Recognition Act, and other laws, people who damage or deface federal statues or monuments will get a minimum of 10 years in prison. And obviously, that includes our beautiful Mount Rushmore. Our people have a great memory. They will never forget the destruction of statues and monuments to George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, abolitionists, and many others. The violent mayhem we have seen in the streets and cities that are run by liberal Democrats in every case is the predictable result of years of extreme indoctrination and bias in education, journalism, and other cultural institutions. Against every law of society and nature, our children are taught in school to hate their own country and to believe that the men and women who built it were not heroes, but that were villains, the radical view of American history is a web of lies.
All perspective is removed. Every virtue is obscured. Every... Every motive is twisted. Every fact is distorted. And every flaw is magnified until the history is purged and the record is disfigured beyond all recognition. This movement is openly attacking the legacies of every person on Mount Rushmore. They defile the memory of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Roosevelt. Today, we will set history and history's records straight. Before these figures were immortalized in stone, they were American giants in full flesh and blood, gallant men whose intrepid deeds unleashed the greatest leap of human advancement the world has ever known. Tonight, I will tell you, and most importantly, the youth of our nation, the true stories of these great, great men. From head to toe, George Washington represented the strength, grace, and dignity of the American people. From a small volunteer force of citizen farmers, he created the Continental Army out of nothing and rallied them to stand against the most powerful military on Earth. Through eight long years, through the brutal winter at Valley Forge, through setback after setback on the field of battle, he led those patriots to ultimate triumph. When the Army had dwindled to a few thousand men at Christmas of 1776, when defeat seemed absolutely certain, he took what remained of his forces on a daring nighttime crossing of the Delaware River. They marched through nine miles of frigid darkness, many without boots on their feet, leaving a trail of blood in the snow. In the morning, they seized victory at Trenton. After forcing the surrender of the most powerful empire on the planet, at Yorktown, General Washington did not claim power but simply returned to Mount Vernon as a private citizen. When called upon again, he presided over the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia and was unanimously elected our first president. When he stepped down after two terms, his former adversary, King George, called him the greatest man of the age. He remains first in our hearts to this day. For as long as Americans love this land, we will honor and cherish the father of our country, George Washington. He will never be removed, abolished, and most of all, he will never be forgotten. Thomas Jefferson, the great Thomas Jefferson, was 33 years old when he traveled north to Pennsylvania and brilliantly authored one of the greatest treasures of human history, the Declaration of Independence. He also drafted Virginia's Constitution and conceived and wrote the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, a model for our cherished First Amendment. After serving as the first Secretary of State and then Vice President, he was elected to the presidency. 
He ordered American warriors to crush Barbary pirates. He doubled the size of our nation with the Louisiana Purchase. And he sent the famous explorers Lewis and Clark into the West on a daring expedition to the Pacific Ocean. He was an architect, an inventor, a diplomat, a scholar, the founder of one of the world's great universities, and an ardent defender of liberty. Americans will forever admire the author of American Freedom, Thomas Jefferson. And he, too, will never, ever be abandoned by us. Abraham Lincoln, the savior of our union, was a self-taught country lawyer who grew up in a log cabin on the American frontier. The first Republican president, he rose to high office from obscurity based on a force and clarity of his anti-slavery convictions, very, very strong convictions. He signed the law that built the Transcontinental Railroad. He signed the Homestead Act, given to some incredible scholars as simply defined, ordinary citizens free land to settle anywhere in the American West. And he led the country through the darkest hours of American history, giving every ounce of strength that he had to ensure that government of the people, by the people, and for the people did not perish from this earth. He served as Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Armed Forces during our bloodiest war, the struggle that saved our Union and extinguished the evil of slavery. Over 600,000 died in that war. More than 20,000 were killed or wounded in a single day in Antietam. At Gettysburg, 157 years ago, the Union bravely withstood an assault of nearly 15,000 men and threw back Pickett's charge. Lincoln won the Civil War. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation. He led the passage of the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery for all time. And ultimately, his determination to preserve our nation and our union cost him his life. For as long as we live, Americans will uphold and revere the immortal memory of President Abraham Lincoln. Theodore Roosevelt exemplified the unbridled confidence of our national culture and identity. He saw the tower grandeur of America's mission in the world, and he pursued it with overwhelming energy and zeal. As a lieutenant colonel during the Spanish-American War, he led the famous Rough Riders to defeat the enemy at San Juan Hill. He cleaned up corruption as police commissioner of New York City. Thank you for watching, friends. I began this program talking about what will I do? What will you do? We will soon be taking trips all over Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. I'm asking you to pray for us. I'm asking you to go to my website, randallterry.com, and to look at the, the schedule. 
to pray for us, to help us if you believe in what we're doing. But more importantly, I'm asking you to consider what will you do to be a prophetic voice in your community and to push back against the evil that is engulfing our country. We'll see you Thursday with the rest of President Trump's speech.